we're going to cover today is um, we're going to talk about SRP. Uh, we're going to talk about NV Energy, and then we're going to do a Q and A at the end. Uh, we should definitely have a bit more time for that Q and A than we did yesterday. Um, yesterday we went about five minutes long, um, and I, I know a lot of people, you know, they have a busy schedule and stuff, so some people end up falling out. But uh, right at the end, um, so today we'll have a little bit more time for that. But let me go ahead and kick this off. All right. So day two, part two of this uh, two-part uh, webinar. Um, yesterday we went over, uh, we talked about the problem, right? And kind of, you know, why are we putting this together? Um, we talked about understanding production versus consumption. And then we talked about uh, APS and, and really how they interact with the, uh, with the utility company since there is no net metering uh, with APS. The... Um, if you guys again didn't have a chance to uh to watch that um you know make sure you go to our youtube channel um it is up on our youtube channel and we have had a, you know we've had about i posted about six o'clock last night uh it looks like we definitely have some people that maybe weren't able to attend or maybe some people watched that again but we we've got a few uh views on there since yesterday so definitely uh happy to kind of see people taking advantage of of the information out there okay so today we're going to talk about srp right um srp is is really a different kind of animal uh, than even uh, even APS. They do have, there's been a lot of change, right? So they did, you know, years back, uh, they did away with just standard net metering um, that they used to have. They used to have a really great program where, you know, it was just super simple, you know, whatever you produced um, and netted against your usage, you had a very low bill, you know, 12 bucks, whatever it might have been. Um, and they did away with that a, a few years ago and they replaced it with, uh, with what's called the E27 plan. And the E27 plan was around for, and it's still around, uh, you know, it was around for a number of years. Um, they then introduced a couple of new plans. And one of the plans that they have is just like APS, um, uh, where basically you're not getting any net metering. You're not, uh, um, you're, you're basically exporting everything out uh, that you're not using and then they're paying you for. So we'll go into details on that. Uh, then they have two demand plans. Um, they're somewhat similar. They, the demand is calculated differently. But, uh, but they're kind of the same in, in, in theory. So let's jump right into the uh, SRP solar plants. Okay? So the, the first one uh, that they have available, and again, they force you on a, one of these plants. So if you go solar with SRP, just like with APS, uh, they're going to force you on a particular plan. You can't just be on a you know, just standard residential. You can't just choose whatever plan you want. You're going to have to be on one of these plants. Okay? And so they've got, the first one is the E13 uh, energy export plan. Uh, that is exactly the same as APS in concept, right? Just the fees and the things are a little bit different. But basically, everything you don't use, you're going to export out. Um, you know, they've got different rates for on-peak summer, off-peak uh, summer, winter, and uh, um, on-peak and off-peak. Uh, then you've got the E15 plan, which is an average demand plan. Um, and so there, and we'll and we'll get into a little bit more on on what demand is and all those. We'll really kind of dive into that and make sure everybody has a good understanding. But that one is based on demand. Uh, there is a $32 a month monthly service charge. Um, and then they, they charge you quite a bit for that demand. And then they have super, super low off-peak rates. Um, then you've got the uh, E27 peak demand plan. Um, E15 and E27 are very similar. Again, the big difference is one of them charges you based on the average demand. The other one charges you based on the high, on the peak demand. Uh, but this one does have considerably lower, the E27 has considerably lower um, demand charges. Right. They both have, I believe, their, their uh, rates, their actual kilowatt hour rates that you pay. Um, they're the same on both, and they're very, very low. So we'll go into those details. SRP is a little bit interesting. You know, we, I like to call them a little evil. Uh, you know, they've really engineered a way to, uh, to make it difficult to go solar. Uh, but having said that, we definitely still have a lot of customers that go solar in SRP um, because it does still make sense. It's just, you know, it's not what it used to be, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't make sense to go in uh, solar in SRP. So that's what we're going to kind of go a little bit over it so that people understand, you know, what that means and how it works. So first, let's talk about the uh, E13 rate plan. So this one is very, if you guys did attend yesterday and you, and you watched on the APS, this is very, very similar to the uh, APS um, rate plan, right? The, the saver choice plan. You basically got a, um, you've got a service, a, a monthly service charge, a minimum monthly service charge. Um, that one will be, you know, sort of similar how APS has a grid charge. This one's obviously much, much higher. Um, then you've got your on-peak rate of 24 cents, off-peak rate of 7.3. Winter is 9.5 on-peak, uh, 6.9 off-peak, so, so super low when it comes to that. 
um, all the exported energy, so all the energy that you don't use directly from the solar system, they're only going to pay you 2.8 cents a kilowatt hour, which is just nothing, right? I mean, that's just, that's just super low. Uh, APS, for example, pays you 10.45. So that, that's a big, big difference there between those two. Um, and as we talked about yesterday, and again, if you didn't have a chance to watch yesterday's um, webinar, we talked, we went a lot into uh, why about 60% of your solar produce gets exported out to, uh, to the utility. Okay? And that's where you really have that mismatch. A lot of times people, you know, they think, well, it's 100% offset. I'm, I'm making, you know, I'm using 15,000 kilowatt hours. My system produces 15,000 uh, kilowatt hours. Therefore, you know, why would I get charged anything from, from the utility company, right? Because one uh, cancels out the other. But the reason for that is, again, because you are, um, and if you look here on this part of this, and we'll go over the sheet, but if you look at this part here, you'll see that the energy that you uh, produce does not match the energy that you used, right? A homeowner is going to use energy 24 hours a day. Uh, the solar system is only going to produce uh, energy approximately 12 hours a day, you know, year round. So about 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., obviously less in the winter, more in the summer, but on average about 12 hours a day. And even then, you know, that's not all 100%, right? So at, at 7 a.m., you know, you might be using, you know, five kilowatts of power, but your system's barely producing one or whatever that number might be, right? So that, that's obviously that curve that everybody's familiar with when it comes to solar. So you're going to export out about 60% of the power. So on the E13 plan, if somebody does a big system, um, what, what ends up happening is you, you have a very, you know, you have a, could have a very big solar payment depending on the system size, but then you also still end up paying SRP a bunch of money. And the reason for that is because everything you export back, they're giving you a very, very low uh, credit for. So we went over the sheet yesterday um, on how to, and it was more animated yesterday. Uh, so again, watch yesterday's if you kind of want to understand a little bit better. But we do have this remaining um, bill worksheet that, that you can use, and I can share this with you. If you guys do want a copy of either yesterday's worksheet or today's worksheet, um, then uh, let me know, and, and I can email that to you. But essentially, just like yesterday, let's say we take a 10-kilowatt system. Let's say the system produces 18,500 kilowatt hours a year. And then let's say the home's uh, yearly usage is 18,500, so basically 100%, right? The system is producing the same amount of power that the home that the home one uses in a year. Now, because you have to, now you have to, but you end up exporting about 60% of your power. That means that out of that 18,500, you're going to export out 11,100. Uh, they're only going to pay you 2.81 cents. And so they're going to give you a yearly credit of uh, $311.91. And, uh, $311 and okay, so that's all they're going to give you. Um, so then that's the first thing we figure out. We figure out what's the solar credits that the utility is going to pay the homeowner. Okay. Next, we figure out how much is SRP going to charge them. Again, let's go back to the concept. So we have 18,500 produced. Um, you're going to export out approximately 60%. You know, it could be anywhere from, you know, you might export out 55, might export out 65, but um, it's going to be in that range, right? It doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really change much. And so the first thing we figure out is how much is SRP going to credit the homeowner for the power that they export uh, out to the grid. The next thing we're going to figure out is how much do they charge them. So in this area, you've got your production again of the solar from 18,500. And now we're doing it times 0.4 because you're only, if you're exporting out 60% of the power, that means you're using 60%, right? They always have to equal 100%. So um, whatever you export, whatever you don't export, you're going to use. That's about 40%. So 40% times uh, 18,500 is 7,400. So you kind of need to know that number. How much of your power are you actually getting from the solar system? It's about 40%. Now we're going to look at the home yearly usage and what they're going to get charged. So again, they used 18,500 uh, 18, um, minus B, so minus 7,400. And why do you do minus B? Well, because that's how much you're getting from the solar. So you do 18,500 usage minus 7,400 because you're getting that directly from solar. It equals 11,100 kilowatt hours that you're buying from the utility. And SRP you're doing that times uh, 10 and a half cents approximately, right? About average. And remember yesterday we talked about APS. APS is about uh, 16 and a half cents that you're going to be paying blended after solar. SRP's rates um, are much lower. We looked at it here. So it's 24 cents in the summer on peak, uh, 7.3 off peak. And then the winter is pretty low across the board. So that ends up around a blended rate of around uh, 10 and a half cents. So SRP is going to charge the homeowner $1,165, okay? for the power that they use for the, for the grid, from the grid 
Um, and then they're also going to charge them that $32.44 uh, per month times 12 months is $389. Okay. The total that SRP is charging this homeowner is $1165.50 plus $389.28 for total down here. You got C plus D, C plus D here of $1554.78. Okay. That's their total uh, SRP bill for the year. Now they're going to have some credits like we talked about, and these are their credits. So you're going to take 1554 minus 311, and you have a yearly SRP bill of 1242.87 divided by 12 is an average um, SRP bill of $103.57. Okay, and remember this is a 10 kilowatt system that's you know quote unquote 100% offset, and at 100% offset, this homeowner you know they're buying a 10 kilowatt system you know that might be anywhere from 30 grand to 35 grand, you know, depending on the loan they're going with and, and, and some of those things. And so they're, they're, they could have a pretty, pretty big uh, loan payment for the solar and still end up paying $103 uh, to, to SRP. And so the E13 is not, you know, in our experience and in our research, the E13 is not a good uh, solution for SRP customers, right? Because, because of this down here. I mean, you're going to end up with a very large bill still. And you're going to end up with a you know fairly large solar system that 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 costs a bunch of money. Let me go ahead and share with you guys on, um, and we looked at this yesterday, but uh, we also have one for for SRP. So I actually have three different systems here um, that that are modeled for this, and we've got a six kilowatt at. Take, so we've got a. We got a six kilowatt here on the E13 at 100%. Um, we've got a 10 kilowatt at 100%, and then we've got a 14 kilowatt at 100%. And this is modeling how much this homeowner is going to pay uh, with a 100% offset system to SRP after they go solar. And so on the six kilowatt, you can see every month this is about what their bills are. Uh, you end up paying for the year about $881, which is an average of around $73 a month. Okay. On a 10 kilowatt, you've got your bills anywhere from you know, about $62 up to about $149, which is about $101 a month. And then on the um, 14 kilowatt, you know, your bills are ranging anywhere from about $72 all the way up to $195, and that's $15.17 a year or an average of $126. Uh, and that's a big system. So you know if somebody's buying a 14 kilowatt, you know, that's going to be a uh, it's going to be a pretty large amount uh, and then they're still going to have this big bill and the reason again for that big bill is because the export rate from srp is only 2.1 cents and we talked yesterday about aps and how aps gives you 10.45 cents and the reason with aps in aps for example this same system in sr that an srp ends up in a 101 dollar bill and um aps you're around 60 for that same one right so this is going to cost 40 dollars or more um, in SRP uh, to the homeowner because of the remaining utility bill. So that is the E13 plan. Um, again, it's not, I wouldn't recommend using it. We don't use it for any of our customers. Uh, we've never been able to make it pencil out. You know, it's always a, a massive negative savings. Um, if you actually do the numbers right and you understand the numbers, it's, it's going to end up being a, a negative number for the homeowner, right? Because, because pre-solar, you know, let's say they're paying, uh, you know, let's say they're paying two hundred and fifty dollars, right? And so now uh, you do a you know you do a large solar system um, that costs them you know one hundred and eighty dollars a month, and then they end up like you see on here paying one hundred eighty, one hundred ninety dollars for the solar system a month, uh, and then they slap a one hundred twenty six dollar bill. You know now you're in the three hundred and you know twenty dollar range uh, where before they were only paying two fifty, and so that's not a good situation. You don't want to put a homeowner in a situation where you know they're now paying seventy dollars more a month. Um, than they were without the solar. So that's what we don't recommend the E13 plan. Um, it, it doesn't work. I wish it did. Uh, we see a lot of times people out there that it does, you know, they think it works and they're selling them. And we see these SRP systems being sold at, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 kilowatt systems on this E13 rate plan. And, and you know, uh, I'm not sure if the homeowner has a full understanding of what that's going to do for them and, and what's that going to do for their remaining bill. So the better option um, in SRP is the E27 rate plan. Okay, so this one is is different than uh, than the other one. You do still have a monthly service charge. Um, they do charge you a demand charge that's based on a peak 30 minute usage throughout the month. You have super super low um, kilowatt hour rates, and then you do have monthly net metering. 
And so uh, one of the things to keep in mind about the monthly net metering part is that uh, it doesn't roll over month to month. So they're only going to, let's say if we're in April now, um, you know, if, if your system produces 1500 kilowatt hours and you were, um, and you were, you know, only using a thousand, uh, what that extra 500 would not get rolled over to May. Uh, they would just cash you out at their, um, at the retail rate of whatever you're paying them, which is, you know, between three to five cents. So they're going to give you a very small amount. Um, they're going to apply it to your, to your usage. So you're only going to get billed for the net amount on the kilowatt hour usage. Uh, but it's going to be, uh, it's not going to carry over. And as we see here, uh, their kilowatt hour charges are very, very low. So producing a bunch of extra power SRP on the E27 is not a good idea because if you guys, if you have an understanding of, of how kilowatt hour uh, cost is, is uh, calculated, you'll see that these numbers are much lower than what you're going to pay with solar. Right? So when you, when, you, when you do solar, especially if you do like a, a finance product with a loan, um, your kilowatt hour rate is basically your, your yearly um, solar bill divided by the uh, production of the system is your kilowatt hour rate. So for example, if I pull up a calculator here, all right, so if I have a calculator here and let's say a, uh, you know, somebody's paying hundred dollars a month uh, for their solar payment times 12. Okay, so it's $1,200 a year. Uh, and produces 12,000 kilowatt hours a year. You divide it by that and you get 10 cents, right? So that means that the, that means that the, the solar, every kilowatt hour produced by the solar system costs 10 cents, right? And, and since these numbers here, less than 10 cents it doesn't really make a lot of sense uh to produce a bunch of power because you could literally be getting it cheaper from srp than you are getting it from solar okay and so the goal here is not to produce a bunch of power right the goal here is to mitigate the demand charges um and so demand charges they're going to charge you for um they have a window so in the summer it's 2 p.m to 8 p.m in the winter it's 5 a.m to 9 and that's a typo there <laughs> it's 5 a.m to 9 a.m and 5 p.m. To, uh, to 9 p.m., right? So they have two separate windows in the, in the winter. Uh, they've got one window in the summer. Um, and then, so they're gonna charge you for these demand, right? The first uh, kilowatt or the first three kilowatts is 789 per kilowatt. So it's 789 times three, right? Uh, the, next, uh, the next seven, so the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh, they're gonna charge you 1437. Each additional one is 2728. Um, in, the, in the summer super uh, peak, which is July and August, they're going to charge you 943 for each of the first three, then 1751, then 3359. Okay? And then here's the winter. The winter is much lower. And then you got this monthly service charge. That's their minimum charge. You're going to have that regardless, like no matter what happens. And, and a lot of times we've seen people kind of leave this information out, uh, whether it's on proposals or, or you know, however they're doing it, um, because you know, maybe they don't know about it or, or whatever the situation. But even if you literally went outside and you just flipped off your main breaker, you're gonna get a bill of 3244. Like there's no way to get around that. And so you have that, that monthly service charge plus the demand charges plus the kilowatt hour charges makes up your entire SRP bill, all right? Uh, so let's talk about what demand is and, and how does it work, okay? So um, it applies only to the on-peak hours um, and it's the highest 30 minute uh, on-peak usage during that month times the Kilowatt, kilowatt hour charge. So they're gonna take your demand and they're gonna multiply it times one of these numbers. And that's not to be confused with kilowatt hour, which is different than kilowatt, right? Um, it does reset every 30 minutes on the half hour. We verify that with SRP. And so basically between 12 and 12.30, they're monitoring, you know, they're taking a look at your highest there. And then they're looking at it every half hour during that on peak time. Now to understand what kilowatt hour versus uh, kilowatt is, um, so kilowatt hour is a, is a measure of, of kilowatts over time, right? So everything in your house that, that's, you know, that's, that's using electricity has either a kilowatt or a watt, right? It really breaks down to a watt, you know, a hundred watt, a hundred watt light bulb, um, you know, that, that uses a hundred watts in an hour, right? Uh, so that'd be a hundred watt hours. Uh, if you've got something like an AC system, you know, right, that usually pulls about five kilowatts. So if a, if a AC system runs for an hour straight, it's going to consume five kilowatts, right? Or it's going to consume five kilowatt hours, but its measurement will be five kilowatts. Um, now this is again done over a 30 minute period. And so you wouldn't get charged for the five, you get charged for the 2.5 scenario. 
But one way to, uh, that it sort of makes sense to me and maybe kind of makes sense to homeowners uh, when you explain this to them is I think of um, kilowatt hours as distance and then I think of, of kilowatts as the speed, like your speedometer. And so think about, say, you're going to San Diego, uh, you know, it's 350 miles away. Um, if you actually drive 60 miles an hour, right, that would actually be cheaper than driving the exact same distance at 80 miles an hour. So what they're, at, what they're doing is uh, they're charging you not, not necessarily about uh, the volume of kilowatts you, that you're using. They're charging you by how many you're using all at the same time, right? So, so what's important here is to either spread that out over more time um, or mitigate that, that demand. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a few ways to do that, right? Um, obviously, the solar system is going to help because uh, the solar system um, production and the power actually offsets what you're using from the grid. Meaning that, let's say it's, you know, right now it's, it's 11.28, right? So solar systems are producing a lot of power right now. Uh, let's say you have a five kilowatt system that's producing, uh, we won't get into the technical things of ACDC, but let's say you have a five kilowatt system that's producing five kilowatts right now, and you've got your AC running, and that uses five kilowatts. Well, SRP is going to see zero. Like they're not actually going to, you know, you're not going to register any, any usage from them. Right. Let's say that you are, uh, your five kilowatt system is running and you're using, you know, you've got your AC on and then you've got your dryer on and both of them together are using, let's say eight kilowatts on um, your system's producing five. So the net amount is actually three. Okay. So your solar system is going to offset that, uh, that power. The problem is, if we go back to this, the time frame here is they're monitoring that between uh, 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. And your solar system, you know, it's going to do great at, at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, you know, 1, 2, 3 o'clock, right? 4 o'clock, it's going to start tapering off. 5 o'clock, it's really going to start tapering off. By the time you get to 6, 7, 8 o'clock, you know, it's doing nothing for you, especially in that 7 to 8 o'clock uh, time frame. And so SRP is still monitoring that demand and your solar system is not doing much for you, right? And so that's where, you know, that's where solutions like batteries come in. Uh, that's where solutions like uh, load controllers or load management systems come in to really help uh, mitigate that demand so that you don't hit these higher tiers uh, and you don't end up with, with a lot of uh, kilowatt hour charge or kilowatt charges, right? All right. So, so if you guys can see this here, um, so this is, again, something that uh, our engineers in-house uh, have built out. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty complex. You know, you've got... A lot of data points uh, looking at winter and and uh, summer demand. You know, obviously it is going to differ by by customers. It's going to differ by size of the home and, and things like that. Um, you know, and then we're we're also pulling in data from PV watts uh, to look at the offset from the solar system and things like that. But this is the end product here that shows uh, what the bill is actually going to be. So um, I've got an example here of a of a home that's using nineteen thousand two ninety six kilowatt hours, which in Arizona that's that's pretty normal. You know, people are here using on average around 18,000 kilowatt hours, some people less, some people more, but you know, 18 to 19,000 kilowatt hours is pretty normal for Arizona. And so I have this person here set up on the uh, E27. Right now it's actually set up with no solar, okay? And so in, in this column here, you can see that this is their estimated kilowatts that they're gonna be using from the grid uh, every month, right? Uh, then this allows us to basically uh, change the kilowatt hour demands uh, when using a low controller and when using the battery. So if I turn on a low controller and I've got a setting here of four kilowatts in the winter and the summer, because that's what this is telling me to, uh, it's actually sent, telling me to use 4.5 in the summer. So I've got 4.5 in the summer. I've got four in the winter. Um, and, and the way that this is done, right? One of the things that we've seen out there is setting uh, unrealistically low numbers for these. And, and so we've ran into, you know, some of the proposals out there where, um, you know, ours is showing a higher bill. Um, and then the, you know, the competitor might be saying, Oh, you know, no, it's not a hundred dollars. It's, it's, you know, it's only $30. The only the minimum fee, because, you know, um, they're telling you that the, the demand is, you know, it's not going to be as high. We're going to set your low controller at, you know, two or three. Um, the thing is, though, that's not realistic, right? Like somebody's going to be upset at that situation. They're going to call you and they're going to say, Hey, this, you know, my dryer is being shut off. My AC is being shut off, right? Because of the low controller. And so, you know, when we do ours, we do it where it's a, where it's a realistic number um, so that the homeowner doesn't feel those negative effects, right? You don't want, you don't want solar to be a negative effect. You don't want them to go shut it off because it's, it's, it's causing issues for them um, because then, you know, none of this works, uh, works correctly. So we use realistic numbers on here, but one of the things I'll show you guys is it doesn't make as big of a difference as you go lower, right? 
Um, but anyway, so let me go ahead and set that to four and a half, uh, four and a half and, and four in the winter. And then let's go ahead and turn on the load controller. So what's gonna happen is here's the, here's the demand. Uh, once you turn on the load controller, it's gonna cap everything if you guys see that change. In the winter, nothing's allowed to go more than four. Uh, if it naturally didn't reach four anyway, it's gonna stay at whatever it was. And then in the summer, it's gonna cap it at four and a half, okay? And so as you see, by doing that, the remaining bill uh, ended up going down, right? Um, then the other thing you can do is obviously add a battery, which will further help uh, with that demand. And when you turn that on, look what happened to their demand, right? There's almost, uh, most, most months, uh, there's almost no demand uh, that's being used from the grid. And so um, this kind of proves a little bit of what I was talking about earlier in that, uh, that load controller, right? Um, here we're setting it at this. Let's say I, I set it to like a unrealistic, hey, I'm only going to give them three in the summer, I'm going to give them two in the winter, right? It only dropped, let me see, what was it before? So it's 79 now, and it was 96 before, right? So it dropped, what, $17 a month, right? So it's not a big difference. Again, one of the things that we've heard out there is, is hey, you know, I was with a different company, or I was doing this, or I was doing that, I understood it differently. And, you know, we always had a ton of savings. You know, in SRP, we put them on the E27, we did a low controller, you know, they were saving, you know, $100 a month or $50 a month or $30 a month or whatever it might have been. Um, because they thought it was, the, the, you know, the kilowatt hour uh, setting on the load controller, but it doesn't make that big of a difference. Obviously, if I set it at zero, now it makes, you know, a, a more significant difference, but that means they're not using any power. That means they literally went outside and just shut off their breaker, okay? So that's not realistic. Um, and then obviously, if you do add a battery, right, then that's going to make that difference because it's really going to bring that demand down. But even if your demand's almost zero, you guys can see here, this is, you know, most of them are under one, a couple of them are a little bit over one. Um, you're still going to be paying kilo, um, kilowatt hour charges, not very much, you know, it's anywhere from $2.44 to $11 a month. I mean, that's pretty negligible, but you're still going to be paying quite a, uh, you know, not quite a bit, but you're going to be paying for the kilowatt hour charges because remember since the, uh, since the credits don't roll over month to month, you don't get to take your, your production from March, April, May and roll them over into the summer. You're gonna to have to pay for those actual, uh, for the actual power in the summer, okay? So that's why, that's why you still end up with a bill here of, you know, to about $120 and, and uh, that's with a battery and a load controller. Um, so that's a little bit about, you know, that's a little bit about how that works um, on the side of, uh, of demand charges versus, uh, versus the E27. Um, to Brandon's point earlier, so here is that actual charge right now. We have it set for a 200 amp service. If I change that to a 400, it actually goes up to $45.44 um, instead of a 200. So, you know, they tack on another, uh, they tack on another, what is that, another $13 just because you have a 400 amp service, right? There's nothing else has changed. Uh, you know, it doesn't cost them anything more. It doesn't cost them more to, to provide you power, um, but they charge you $13 more anyway. All right, let me jump back into the, okay, so that's SRP. Uh, looks like we have about 25 minutes left. I will, uh, just a couple of things before I go, and we've kind of went over these, just kind of a little bit of a recap. Uh, so some of the common mistakes we've seen happening out there are, you know, giving a customer 100% offset system on the E13. You know, they're still gonna end up with probably about $100 plus average SRP bill um, on top of the solar payment. Other thing that we see is, uh, you know, calculating the uh, remaining SRP bill incorrectly, right? We've seen a lot of them where they, where they basically take the system production, uh, they, they subtract it from the uh, usage, and then they multiply it times four cents, um, you know, adding in maybe an unrealistic load demand charge, and then not accounting for the minimum, uh, minimum monthly charge of 32.44. All right, so that is SRP. Let me go ahead and jump to uh, Nevada Energy. Now, Nevada Energy is, is a lot more simple. So if some of you guys are on the call because you're selling in Nevada or maybe you're okay. So if you're looking at that market, then, uh, you know, this is going to be good for you. Um, their, their program is, is basically a net metering plus net billing. Uh, it's not 100% net metering. And, and if you guys have been in that market, you'll know that uh, they've had different tiers. So it used to be a 95% buyback. Then it went to, I want to say, what, 88%. Um, and then now it's at 81%. And then once this tier gets filled up, then, then it's going to drop to 75% and it's going to stay there. And so it, it's similar in a sense to a uh, regular net metering, but it doesn't roll over month to month, okay? What ends up happening is during the month, you're going to, uh, whatever power your system produces, it's gonna, get, uh, it's gonna get applied to your usage. Whatever overage there is, they're going to give you a bill credit 
that is 81% of the retail rate, okay? And so I'll show you guys that as well. We do have a separate calculator for that. So let me go ahead and share that. Okay, so here is a uh, NV Energy um, calculator. And so, you know, in this column here, we have the, we have the uh, homeowner's usage. Uh, here we have the solar production. So again, it's, it's you know, it's about a 100% offset system, okay? And what ends up happening is here in column H, here's your power, right? So your usage is 1131, your production is 1182. You've got a negative 51 uh, credit. And so they're gonna uh, kilowatt hour credits. They're not gonna roll that to February. What they're gonna do is they're gonna turn it to cash and they're gonna give you a bill credit of 447. Now that bill credit cannot apply to the minimum fee. And so uh, NV Energy has a minimum monthly fee of $12.50 plus tax on that. So it ends up at around $13. And so you're always gonna have that as a minimum. So what they're going to do is they're going to take this 447 and they're going to roll it over month to month. It's very similar to what APS does, right? They're going to take that and they're going to roll it over month to month. So then when you get to something like July, right, your solar system is producing 1796. Your, your usage is 2711. Uh, so your net usage is actually 915 positive, which means that they're going to charge you for 915 kilowatt hours, which is $99.64. But you've got this credit of 226 you've been building all year. So you're still at a negative. Uh, which means you're still paying around $13, okay? Same thing in August, and here's what happens in September. September, you have a net usage of $705, I'm sorry, 705 kilowatt hours um, from the utility. They're gonna charge you $76 for it. You ran out of, uh, you only had 15 credits left, so they're actually gonna charge you $61.62 plus your 13 bucks, so now you have $77 in September, right? Um, same thing happens in October, and then you go back to your minimum. So even though the minimum bill is $12.50, there's gonna be months where they absolutely are gonna get a higher bill. And so their average in, in NV Energy is around $20 a month, right? Um, and, and that's, you know, when we do our proposals for Nevada Energy, that's how we present it. We just tell them that, hey, you're gonna have a, once you go sell, your average bill is gonna be about tw uh, $20 a month with, uh, with NV Energy. And again, we always kind of stress uh, the average because we don't want that customer giving us a call in September, you know, super upset or maybe leaving a bad review or, you know, whatever the situation might be getting a bad taste in the mouth thinking that they got lied to uh, when they get the $77 bill. You know, they're going to be calling you, they're going to be calling your company and saying, hey, there's something wrong with my system. I need to get service out here. You know, I've been paying $13 a year and now it's $77, something's wrong. And there's nothing wrong. That's just how it works, right? That's just how the program works and, and they end up averaging it. So that is how, uh, that is how NV Energy works. Let me get back to here. And yeah, NV Energy is actually pretty straightforward. So I don't have a lot more on NV Energy aside from just keep in mind that with NV Energy, uh, you are with 100% system, you're gonna typically pay about $20 a month uh, on average to the utility. Uh, they do have a 12.50 minimum bill with a bit of taxes on there. So, you know, it's about $13. Obviously that's give or take, you know, a lot of homeowners aren't gonna make a big deal if you're off by a, a few dollars, right? If you're off by $20, $30, $40, $50, that's gonna be a big deal. You know, if you're off by, you know, $5 or something like that. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to, uh, you know. Um, and that's basically what I had uh, for the presentation on SRP and, uh, and Nevada Energy. Um, obviously, you know, yesterday we did go over, you know, why the problem, why we're kind of talking about this and, and summarize that a little bit. It was just, you know, we see a lot of, um, obviously there's a lot of people coming into solar from other industries uh, at, a very, at a very fast pace because it's the industry to be in, right? I mean, there's a lot of people selling solar. It helps homeowners. Uh, you know, it, it's a really good, uh, a really good thing, uh, but it's almost happening so quickly that there's, there's not enough time to actually get all this information. And then the information changes a lot, right? A lot of things kind of change over time and, and sometimes it's hard to kind of keep up with that. And so, you know, that's what we talked about yesterday about the problem. Uh, we talked about the production consumption, uh, APS. Uh, so if you haven't had a chance to watch yesterday's, um, again, go to the link I, I put in the chat earlier and make sure you, uh, make sure that you, uh, that you do watch that. Um, so now that we went through that, I'll go ahead and open it up for some uh, Q and A. We've got about 15 minutes left, so let me see what some of the uh, some of the stuff is on here. All right. So Brandon uh, was asking me about the uh, 200 amp service panel. Uh, we talked about that. Uh, can't explain to you. Uh, yeah, Brandon. So you're asking about. Um, can you explain how export energy varies uh, with system size and uh, location of the uh, equipment. So Brandon, this is one of the things actually that we went over a little bit yesterday. 
Uh, I definitely recommend this, um, this tool if you guys haven't uh, used it. Let me share this here. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is the Solar Edge Designer, okay? Um, so this is the Solar Edge Designer, and this actually is a really good, simple tool. It's free to use. Um, you can build out a system here, and you can actually choose different um, profiles, right? So you can do a you know, retiree working from home. You can do a, a family with, with school age children. They, they have all these uh, different options. And you can obviously put in your, your consumption, uh, and, and then you design your solar system, which is going to end up you know, giving you what that production is. And so when you get to the summary, this is going to show you the relationship of how much is your production over on this side. Let me get my annotate tool here. Okay, so this is going to show you your production on this side, which I don't know why they do it in megawatt hours, but this is 18,590 kilowatt hours. And then this is going to show you your consumption. So this is, you know, a quote unquote 100% system. And so it's going to show you that you are consuming 41% of the, uh, of the power and you're exporting 59%. So again, about that, that 60 40 split, right? If you actually go in here and you change, um, and you change some of the parameters like the system size or the, or the consumption, that will change, right? So let me change the consumption. Let's say we go to something like, uh, you know, 26,000 kilowatt hours. And if I go back to summary and reports, now we're no longer at a, you know, quote unquote, hundred uh, percent system. Um, so now you're seeing that you're actually consuming about 53% of your power uh, directly and you're exporting 47% of your power, right? So that is, that is going to change it. If your solar system is smaller than your usage, then you're going to use more of that, of that power directly. Okay. But you're never going to use all of it. It's just not, again, the homeowner uses uh, power 24 hours a day. The solar system does not provide uh, power 24 hours a day. So it's never going to be, and, and, and it didn't make that big of a difference, right? We increased it by quite a bit and you'll see that it went from self-consumption was at 41% and it, it just went up by 12%, um, even though it be because of that. Right. And then if you go the other way around, let's say your solar system is, you know, uh, oversized, then, so we have 18.5, let's put this at, let's say 14,000 kilowatt hours. Okay. So now you've got a big solar system. So now your self-consumption from the actual solar system actually went down to 33% because you're producing a bunch of power and you're still, you, you know, your usage didn't change at your house, right? You're still using the same amount of power. And so you're getting whatever you, you can only get so much from the solar system because that's all you're using. So now you're exporting out even more instead of exporting out 59%. Now you're exporting out 67%. And you can definitely play with this. So again, solar edge designer, uh, it's a free tool from solar edge and in your side modeling, you can, you know, this is a South facing roof. So if you change it to West, so if you change it to East, uh, things like that, that is going to, uh, you know, that's going to affect some of those things. So go ahead and play with that. Okay. Um, Let's see here. Les had a question about uh, using a lower or smaller system. Um, yeah, Les, it's definitely, you know, if you're doing the E27 plan, depending on, and, you know, you have to play around with the system size, but uh, typically a smaller system is going to yield better results depending on their usage. So you can definitely, there are some uh, things to that. Uh, Brandon says, great tool from storage, very powerful, is referencing SRP. Yeah, Brian, I think that the tool, uh, it will show that, right? So if you, if he's saying if, if you only have like, let's say an east facing roof plane and, and obviously the, uh, if their usage uh, pattern is, you know, very heavily weighed in the afternoon, uh, let's do like a single household. This one's even more in the afternoon, right? So it will show those effects of, of using one or the other, right? And, and how much of the self-consumption is going back to the grid and how much is not. And so you could really use that if you wanted to get that technical. And when you're doing those spreadsheets or that worksheet that we have, you know, instead of using a 60%, you could modify that depending on, on what this, uh, what the tool says. Uh, yeah, Eddie, on the, on the battery, uh, part, um, now we don't have a spreadsheet. Like I said, this one is a little bit more, uh, technical on that. Um, I think just, you know, what we were showing before with the, with the calculator was that it doesn't make that big of a difference. So we could probably maybe share something where you have a range, uh, of the effect of the battery and all that. Um, but yeah, absolutely. It makes, um, SRP, um, you really should have a load management system uh, at a minimum. Um, you should have um, you should have a load management system at a minimum, um, if not also adding a battery. Uh, without it, if you just do a solar system without any of those things, there is really no way 
to, to accurately uh, predict what that person's SRP bill is going to be, right? Because if their demand hits 10 because they had a party or whatever it might have been, like that could be way out there. So there's really, you almost can't do a proposal because, you know, what number do you give them, right? Unless they're led to believe that, hey, I'm going solar and now I'm not going to have a bill, which is true, uh, you know, but that's a whole nother discussion. And, and, and you know, so, uh, all right, let's see what else we have. Um, so I had a question about what about building a, a larger system for SRP customers. So um, the only time you would ever do that is if you're doing the E13 plan that we talked about. And, and on that one, again, even with a very large system, like we had, we had a 14 kilowatt system. Let me go ahead and reshare that. So this was a large SRP system, 14 kilowatt, 100% quote unquote offset. Um, and they end up with a $126 bill, even with the 14 kilowatt system. Right. So that doesn't make a lot of sense to really do these big systems. Really, the only thing that makes sense is smaller systems uh, with a low controller and, and potentially a battery. Okay. Uh, Adrian says, um, yeah, Adrian, so that, that falls into that smaller system. Um, you know, if you're trying to figure out the system size based on, uh, you know, to kind of as a guideline, if you take about 50%, you, you only want to produce about 50% of their, of the solar, um, of the power from the, uh, from the solar system. Um, and, and really the purpose there is to kind of help mitigate some of that demand. And if you're doing a battery to also help charge that battery. But remember, as we kind of went over earlier, the amount you're paying per kilowatt hour is going to be more expensive than what they're getting from SRP that they could buy from SRP. So it doesn't make sense to do a, a large solar system on that plant. And we'll go ahead and, and wrap it up. And I appreciate everybody uh, being on this. And, uh, you know, I hope, I hope there's a lot of value to a lot of the people that were on here. Um, we're going to put this one up on, uh, on YouTube along with our other video. Uh, go ahead and, you know, these videos, we really did make it for a better understanding for the industry, uh, for other companies, for other reps in the market. And so feel free to, uh, you know, distribute this to your team if you want to use it as training, uh, whatever it might be. Um, that's okay. That's not a problem. And if you guys do want either the APS worksheet or the uh, SRP worksheet to figure out that remaining bill, uh, shoot me an uh, email. Uh, val at sunsolarsolutions.com and appreciate everybody turning in. Thanks so much.